Hello friends, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Past Bedtime. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2020 reading stats so far. So this will just cover January through June. All of the fun reading stats like number of books, number of pages, format, age group, all that good stuff. We're going to go through all that today. And then at the end I'm going to share my top five favorite books that I've read so far this year. So make sure to stay tuned for that. I'm wearing my glasses today since we're talking about stats. That would make me look smart. But all that aside, let's just get into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the total number of books that I read from January to June and that is 96 books. At the beginning of the year I set my Goodreads goal for 150 books and so I am definitely meeting and exceeding that as of now. By the end of June I was 21 books ahead of schedule so I definitely am on track to meet that goal by the end of the year and so I am excited to do that. It'd be really cool if I could read uh, the most books I've ever read in a year this year. I kind of think I'm on track to do that too so stay tuned we shall see. That breaks down to an average of 16 books per month and I have a little graph of the breakdown by month if you are interested. So in January I read 13 books. In February I read 11. In March I read 12. In April I read 24 which is actually 25% of the total books that I read in the first half of the year. April was definitely my best rating month by far probably will be for the rest of the year if we're being honest. In May I read 17 books and then in June I read 19. So of that total 96 books that I have read so far this year that breaks down to a total of 34,035 pages and this stat includes all 96 books. I didn't read all of them physically but I did uh, take their page count from Goodreads and counted them in this figure just because I wanted to track that. So this breaks down to about an average of 187 pages per day which is honestly amazing and hopefully I can continue that statistic for the rest of the year. I am kind of feeling a little slumpy recently but hopefully I will overcome that and keep trucking and meet or exceed this by the end of the year. Now I do listen to a lot of audiobooks as well and I have been tracking the hours that I've listened to audiobooks and this was honestly like shocking to me. I know I listen to a lot of audiobooks but to see them all um, consolidated into one statistic is wild. So far in 2020 I have listened to 17 days, <laughs> 4 hours and 57 minutes of audiobooks. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what am I doing? But when you divide this by day, this breaks down to an average of 2 hours and 15 minutes a day, which is reasonable, especially because I almost exclusively listen to audiobooks on 2 times speed, so that's pretty much just an hour of listening to an audiobook per day, which seems pretty reasonable, if we're being honest. But just that overall stat of like <laughs> 17 days, it was insane. It was so many hours of audiobooks listened to. Crazy. Okay, let's talk about the format of the books that I read. Also, as I mentioned, I read a lot of audiobooks. It takes up the majority of my reading by like a slight margin, so here's the graph for that. 43% of my reading is due to audiobooks, 38% is print slash physical books, and then 20% I read digitally as ebooks. Moving on to the age group of books that I read, I thought this was super super interesting. So I read an even amount of adult and YA books. I think this is a very new stat for me this year. Usually I tend more towards YA and even middle grade, but this year I have been reading one adult book for every one YA book that I read, so I think that's really awesome. I'm expanding my reading, growing as a reader. I am an adult, so I probably should be reading adult books, but you know. I like the mix. So as you can see in my handy dandy pie chart, I read 45.83% adult books, 45.83% YA books, and then the rest of that 8.33% were middle grade books. Honestly, I feel like I've been reading a lot of middle grade books, so I'm kind of surprised that this category is a little bit lower. So it'll be interesting to see by the end of the year how this shifts and changes. Now when we are looking at the gender of the authors that I read, I think I need to do a little bit of a better job diversifying this. Um, apparently I am prejudiced against against men, which, um, not a huge surprise. I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyway, 81.65% of the books that I have read this year have been written by female authors. <laughs> That is quite a huge chunk, a very large majority. Then 16.33% have been written by men, and then 1.02% have been written by a non-binary or trans author. I definitely want to make an effort to read more from non-binary and trans authors, so hopefully I can even this graph out a little bit by the end of the year. Now, speaking of diversity, let's talk about diversity in my books and in my authors. So for the sake of full transparency, I have not really been paying attention to what books I pick up and who they are written by. In 
until June and the sparking of the Black Lives Matter movement. Since June, I have tried to make an effort to include a lot more POC authors and books with POC characters and representation into my reading. So my biggest goal for the rest of 2020 is to really change this graph and even out this graph and read even more POC authors. That is my biggest goal for 2020, so hopefully that will change. In the first half of 2020, 10.4% of the books that I read were written by POC authors, and this includes everybody from Black authors, Hispanic authors, Asian authors. In the second half of 2020, I think I'm not going to do this catch-all category. This is, I didn't make this spreadsheet, I just downloaded this. These settings were already inputted, but I might try and go in and fiddle with it, and so I can break down the diversity even more and really see and get to the core of the issue and what I'm reading. But as of now, these are the graphs that I have. As I mentioned, 10.4% of the books that I read were written by POC authors, and then 89.6% were written by white authors. This is honestly very frustrating to see, and I really hope to improve this, and I hope that you guys will help hold me accountable. When we look at POC protagonists versus white protagonists, we have a similar breakdown. There's a little bit more representation in this category, but not much. Of the books that I read, 12.5% had POC protagonists, while the other 87.5%, while they might have had representation in side characters, the main character was white. Now, as you probably could guess, I do a little bit better in my diversity and representation of queer authors and queer protagonists. Um, I really love LGBT and queer books, and a lot of my reading is in that genre, so these graphs are a little bit better, although I definitely could be reading more own voices books. The breakdown of queer authors versus cishet authors is 12.5% queer authors versus 87.5% cishet authors. So this stat could be a little bit skewed, as a lot of authors might not put their sexuality or gender identity out there. So the authors counted in the queer category are ones that are out, basically. So the stat could be a little bit skewed, but for the most part, this is what we've got in terms of queer protagonists versus cishet protagonists. And if you don't know, I am saying cishet. Cis meaning you identify with the gender you were assigned at birth, and het being short for heterosexual, meaning um, heterosexual. <laughs> So in terms of protagonists, 30.2% of the books that I read have had queer protagonists, while 69.8% have had cishet protagonists. I actually kind of thought that this would be a little bit more like 50-50. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it's not, but I don't know. <laughs> I think it's because I've been reading a lot more nonfiction and adult this year, and not as much of that is gay. <laughs> So that might be the reason. Now moving on to Own Voices books, I do want to make more of an effort to read Own Voices books and I have been since June and I hope that that reflects in my end of the year stats video. But as of now, the first half of 2020, 16.7% of the books that I read were Own Voices books while 83.3% were not. All right, done with the heavy conversation. <laughs> Here is a nice pie chart on the source of my books. 31.25% of these books were ones that I already owned pre-2020. 20.83% were ones that I actually purchased in 2020. This is a lot higher than I thought it would be, but I guess that it's good that I'm reading the books that I'm buying, so hopefully I'll keep that up. 17.71% of the books that I've read have come from the library, and that is a mixture of audiobooks and ebooks from Libby, as well as physical books from the two different library branches that I am a member of. <laughs> I'm a cheater. I get a library card whenever I move to a new place and it's great. 11.46% of the books have come from Audible. I did purchase some of these in 2020. I think I'm also counting ones that I owned prior to 2020, although I'm not positive. Also, some of them are coming from the romance Audible package that I paid for. So that's like a mix of things. 6.25% of the books that I have read have been gifts. I think these were like Christmas gifts that I read earlier in the year. And then 12.5% of the books have come from Scribd. I'm actually happy to see this stat because I wasn't really sure if I was reading enough from Scrib, but it seems like I am, so hopefully it's worth paying for. Now we're gonna move on to star ratings, a star rating breakdown. This actually shocked me. I really thought that I was being more critical of books this year and giving a lot of books lower ratings and feeling meh about a lot of books, but honestly, four star books were my biggest category and five star were like the next biggest category, so I guess I'm reading more good stuff than I thought. But anyway, in the first half of 2020, I read four one-star books, and that breaks down to 4.17% of my reading. I rated one book one and a half star, and that breaks down to 1.04% of my reading. I almost read 100 books, so these uh, numbers and percentages line up pretty well, which uh, honestly makes me happy, but. <laughs> so I gave seven books two stars, and that is 7.29% of my reading. Three books got 2.5 stars, and that is 3.13% of my reading. 15 books got three stars. I guess there is a pretty big meh chunk. That is 15.63% of my reading. I gave 10 books three and a half stars. That is 10.42% of my reading. 35 books got four stars, breaking down to 36.46% of my reading. One book apparently got 1.4 stars. <laughs> 
What? What did I just say? I rated one book apparently 4.5 stars, breaking down to 1.04% of my reading, and 20 books actually got five stars this year so far, and that is 20.83% of my reading. I am very happy that that is such a big category. That's wonderful. Like the majority of books that I read were between four and five stars. Like that's awesome. I'm doing, I'm having a great reading year apparently. I wouldn't have guessed, but I am. <laughs> And then I wanted to throw in this graph that is country of origin. This is like where the authors come from or I don't know if it's where the books are first published but for the most part I think it's where the books are first published. And this is honestly more diverse than I expected. Obviously I have the biggest chunk from the US um, as I am in the US and those are the books that are like easiest to obtain and the most abundant. But in total more than 20% of my books are coming from outside the US which is higher than I would have guessed that it would be. It's not great obviously but it is a good jumping off point for improvement I think and hopefully I can see significant improvement here by the end of the year as well it will be interesting to like compare and contrast these videos and see what I do improve on and what I still need to work on in the future those are my 2020 reading stats. I hope you thought that was interesting. Now I'm going to jump into my five favorite books of the year so far. So in fifth place is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This is an adult mystery thriller novel and it is set in this town in rural England where a river runs through and a single mother ends up dead in this river and she is not the first woman to end up dead in this river. Earlier that year another girl wound up dead in this river and they are actually connected because the daughter of the mother who died was best friends with the girl who also died in the river. And and so there is this web of mystery surrounding this town. We follow a bunch of people in the town, some like accused of the murder, some involved in some way. We follow cops that are investigating. I just really, really loved the story. I listened to the audiobook. Everybody had accents. It was so engaging. We're having a thunderstorm, so Elvis is very nervous <laughs> and he wants to be as close to me as possible. Are you scared? Are you scared? join the video all right we've got a friend here so yeah i absolutely loved this story it kept me engaged the entire time i was so excited to figure out what was going on and i just thought the mystery was really well done i thought it was very atmospheric i just really loved it i don't think that this is a very popular opinion but i was obsessed with this book i thought it was so good in fourth place is where the carl dad sing by delia owens this is an adult literary fiction type book and it follows this girl named kaya who is also known around town as the marsh girl she lives out in the marshes and she kind of has to learn how to survive by herself when her family all kind of up and leaves her. They're all very flighty, very poverty stricken, but she perseveres and survives. Many years later when this man in the town ends up murdered, they suspect Kaya of killing him because she was involved with him a little bit. It really is a story about like prejudice and the expectations and judgment we put on people, uh, but it's also just amazing and the ending of this story will just blow you out of the water. It is such a good twist. I had no idea that it was coming. Oh, I really loved this so much. I think if you can like slog through some of the boring bits. It's very much worth it. I really loved this story. In third place is The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is another adult mystery thriller and it follows this father and son who moved to a new town and in this town about 20 years ago there was a serial killer called The Whisper Man and he got this name because he was said to whisper into children's windows to lure them outside to murder them. And 20 years later when this father and son moved to this town there start to be these like copycat murders. Uh, they don't know if it's like an old accomplice or if it's just a copycat murder and so they're investigating trying to figure out what's happening. The son kind of starts to become a target of this man and it is just a very good, very thrilling mystery. It keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. I have said this before but I almost had a heart attack at the climax. I literally had to put the book down and step away because my heart was pounding out of my chest. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> So, so good. Loved this book so much. Are you all right? Oh my gosh. You're so nervous. In second place is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is an adult romance novel and it is enemies to lovers. It takes place in an office place. These two co-workers like absolutely hate each other. They always are playing pranks on one another and trying to get under the other's skin, make the other crack until finally they kind of decide that maybe they might like each other a little bit more than they thought. And this was really great. It's such a great like enemies to lovers story because there's so much tension. The romance is just incredible. I loved this book so much. It was very much an addictive read and I just had fun the whole time reading it. There wasn't like that big dramatic breakup at the end like most romance books do and which really annoys me. So I just loved this book so much. It's one of the best romances I've ever read in my life. And then finally The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake is the best book that I have read so far this year. This is a middle grade story about this girl named Sunny St. James who has a heart condition but she ends up getting a heart transplant. Following the surgery she wants to do some things that she's never been able to do before 
before, like swim and surf, also wants to meet a best friend and kiss a boy for the first time. But when she does accomplish this second task on her list and meets her best friend, she wonders if maybe she would rather kiss this girl best friend of hers than a boy. And this really is just a story about finding yourself, about family, about growing up, about friendship, about first love. It is the cutest thing in the world and so, so good. It will make you sob. I loved it so much and I really just think everybody should read it. All right, Elvis, he's shaking. Oh, babies, it's okay. All right, you guys, Elvis and I are going to go. We really appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. All relevant links will be in the description down below. I will also include the spreadsheet that I use. I believe Allie from the Hardback Order actually is the one who created it. So definitely all credit goes to her. There's some great stuff in there for tracking your reading stats. It's really fun. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.